Hi everyone, welcome back. This is St. Lotus and we are here to talk about uh, what new cards are going to be played in New Capenna as well as Baldur's Gate. It's been a minute since the last VRD, but six months, and uh, there's been a lot of new sets, but since we talked about Kamigawa already, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the newer sets that are coming up for the one on August 13th. I'm Mark yeah. work. I'm Stephen Hagen. So our, our last face-to-face was in March. Uh, so we're, you know, pushing out, we're hitting our next quarter here. And these are the cards that might be of interest to some people, uh, at least in Black our opinion. Lotus speed one. Yeah, <laughs> always, always, always. Uh, yeah, so New Capena, um, and then Baldur's Gate, and then the Associated Commander decks are all the new things since. Um, and then obviously we've got um, always got stuff going on in the Discord, uh, and then online ones. So some of these, especially some of the New Capena ones, might have already seen some play. Uh, in fact, I, I will say off the bat, for my top for New Capena, uh, my top adventures, I've left three, actually kind of four off, because Ooh. they've already seen enough draft that I, I'm just assuming those. And those are Ledger Shredder, yep, uh, Unlicensed Hearse, Obnixilis, and the Triomes are the ones that I left off my short list because those I are didn't ones. Think about the Triomes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So those are ones that have already seen enough. Uh, Hearse has been drafted a couple times, several times for sideboards. Ob's been drafted a couple times. Uh, Ledger Shredder's been all over the place and moved its way up into even top ten, top fifteen type picks. Uh, mm -hmm. and then the triomes obviously are going to be here or there, depending on, um, um, your, your deck. So that makes sense. Yeah. I think those are reasonable. Like, I mean, be because we know those cards have already seen play, uh, I mean, I guess if we can rank those, right? Like triomes, I think are absolutely going to be a mainstay of VRDs. You're going to see probably at least one draft in every VRD. Um, I unless in turns. Our stats show that it's been picked in three out of four of the drafts. That feels a little high to me. I would expect it to probably fall to around the same level of relic, where it will get drafted most of the time, but probably not uh, more than probably not much more than half. Uh, but Ledger Shredder feels like it is new. This is this is the new Delver, right? If we cycle back ten years, this is where Delver was. It's going to be in every single draft. Yeah, and we haven't seen Ledger Shredder anywhere. I think it's really interesting yet, which is in like a reanimator shell. Um... With, you know, I know some of the drafted one, and then later on they told me, "Oh yeah, I should have drafted Ledger Shredder." You know? That makes sense. Uh, but yeah, really I, I imagine it will be good there. I think it's also just really solid as a um, kind of a blue red aggro deck, right? Like that's yeah. that's the thing where we have been seeing at C play, and I expect to see that kind of Merktide Delver type strategy be the place yeah. where it goes. That tempoy that tempoy list is just it's just good card exactly. draw and and I think connive overall is a pretty powerful potential mechanic for VRD and I've got a couple uh, at least one on here that I think people are probably sleeping on that I think is pretty potent so for the right deck that's exciting um, um, so, so yeah I, I, maybe you want to start going through new Capenna? traditionally we've gone back and forth with our ones and ones back and sure forth, we'll, but... we'll go back and forth yeah so i i think when new when new Capita hit i was wasn't overly impressed with it honestly but like the more i dig into it it's actually probably my favorite set since throne of eldrain um when you're not drafting it presumably yeah i actually like really like drafting new Capita. like i, oh, I found it i found it to be a really enjoyable draft format cool. um so i'm gonna start off uh with a little red card here that i think is pretty potent and that is rob the archives Ooh, that was not even on my list so uh is, it, is so this the draw two this is essentially draw two right so yeah. it, but it's actually draw four if you sack a one drop because it's got cat casualty one so for a red and one if you sacrifice a one drop you get to exile the top four cards of your library and you can play them until the next turn um so it gives them to you this turn and next turn which is better than the, some of the older impulse cards that only let you do it this turn right right no we have seen uh there's one of these ACs play a lot that's very good um that i'm completely blanking on right now but yes like that uh th this effect has been traditionally incredibly powerful yeah um but so are you imagining this what kind of deck are you imagining this falling into right i saw this and i was like all right i cannot imagine a world where i want this over one of the actual like straight up draw twos um so it, it was hard for me to imagine a world where this card fits in my deck but are you thinking in a mono red deck or wh where is I mean, this better than night's whisper 
I so yeah, I, I think that you have a couple of things. Any a deck that you're wanting to get creatures to the yard, right? A deck that you're wanting to have some kind of aristocratic thing. I mean, the fact that you you know essentially are getting to draw four. Uh, a deck with a whole lot of cheap things like a burn deck could run it. Uh, decks that don't have you know decks that don't have access necessarily to Nightwish, but like a white red. Mm -hmm. um something that your your card draw is going to be a little more subpar on sometimes uh this could have very easily slotted and i should have thought about it slotted into my white red deck that i ran um oh, sure this last uh discord lightning draft right just because it gives you a little more reach a little more card draw uh and depending on how much mana you have you can simply choose to do the two or you could do four and the fact that you get them again next turn is the key to this one right it's not like some of these other uh, like synthesizer or whatever that gives it to you only this turn that if you, you use or lose it, the fact that you can play the land and get it this turn and then still do it next turn as well. Yeah, that tracks. Okay, I, I can see that. I, I, I have, this, I, is, this is the okay. ghostly voice of Eric Levine popping in. Hi, Steven, I have terrible news about Rob the Archives. It's only this turn. That one's only this turn? Well, yeah. shit. Okay. <laughs> it does say this turn, yes. See, I've been um, playing a lot of these effects in, in EDH, and a lot, <laughs> some of them are this turn, some of them are next turn, and I easily get them confused. <laughs> well, no, no, this is one of those like, primary examples where reading the card explains the card. So right. good, good on both of us for doing that. Thank you, the ghostly voice of Eric Levine. Um, I, I still think this card doesn't have no chance of getting played, though. Right? I, can right. Easily I still see think this. it's good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily good. Uh, I think we'll see. I think you have to be able to leverage the, ca the casualty effect or be in a combo deck that can't play black or blue. Um, and I can imagine those things occurring. Um, something like Eric's deck that uh, that was trying to go off with Power Artifact, or not, mm -hmm. uh, with Grim Monolith and um, Zerda. not Lutri, the other one. Zerda, Zerda, Zerda yeah. Um, that, that kind of list I could see maybe wanting to have card draw and this being a good enough way to make it happen. Um, but yeah, it, it feels pretty specialized to me. Because uh, casualty, I think, is a pretty giant cost if you're actually playing fair creatures. Um, yeah, I agree. But no, Rob, Rob the Archives, does, I, th I think, has some potential. It was on my, my list of probably not cards. So for me, my number one was actually Scheming Fence. And this card, I think... That, it first, is on my list. So Yeah, at fir first blush, you just think, this is a Pakula card. Okay, we can play Meddling Mage already. Why do you want this card instead? But Scheming Fence, for me, uh, is less about interacting with your opponents. Like, certainly playing a 2-mana two 2-3 two, that shuts down one of their activated abilities has, like, benefits. It probably goes in some kind of uh, blue... Once you're already in a uh, a blue-white Hate Bears-type list, you probably want to have this card in it with you. But the real magic for this card is when you play it in your own Time Vault deck, and you can either use it to shut down some problematic card from their side, uh, like a Planeswalker or something, um, or you can use it as a backup insurance plan for your Time Vault. So if you have Time Vault that gets resolved and you're still hunting for your key, you can play Scheming Fence as a backup copy of it. Uh, alternatively, like somebody steals your Time Vault. Like, there's just like so much versatility and weird scenarios that can emerge with this card that it I, feels like it's it can be really powerful. I drafted this in Blue White Humans, and you know I drafted Time Vault, but I ended up not main decking it. I ended up <laughs> putting Time Vault on my board just because the, the draft didn't go where I thought it was going to go. Right. Um, but the card was still phenomenal all day long, just shutting off Moxes, shutting off Soul Rings. Um, you know, I forced somebody's hand with a top, basically saying like you had to draw a card and get rid of your top temporarily. And there was something going on. It was like, I can't remember exactly what it was. Like they were doing something and I filed it in and they were getting ready to shuffle and I filed it in naming top. And it was just like, okay, you can get rid of your top to your shuffle or I have top and you don't. Right. Um, so it, yeah, yeah it's that's pretty cool. It shut down Moxus. Uh, due to a misplay, it shut down a Black Lotus, uh, where you know they didn't pop <laughs> it immediately. And then, <laughs> right. Uh, so, well, uh, now so the, they have to they have to sacrifice it before you actually before it comes right. into play, right? Well, the, why it was a misplay is because they had Lurus, so they could have recast it. Oh, and once the, once the Black Lotus you named is gone, it's not the named card; it is the card on the play. So that's the weirdness of this card. Is that it's not like a meddling That's mage funny. where it's everything you name, it's actually the permanent that is in the battlefield. So if they sack the black lotus and then get it back, it's no longer mm -hmm. affected, right? So that's a yeah, that's a pretty funky interaction, but that makes sense. Right. Um, and I, I don't I think that changes that, the I don't think that changes how powerful this card is. It, no, it, but it does very good. The, the fact that like if they have a couple things out and you play it, they can't they can't just get rid of all their things, right? It's not like you have to choose what you're picking when you cast the card. 
you right. once it resolves, you get to pick, and there's no interaction point between those those me naming the card and you having your thing shut down. So like it, it because of that, I think it's really powerful, right? Imagine if they were Arcadon Ravager out and a bunch of things. You you can't just like you they can't wait for you to pick Mox and then and then sacrifice that Mox to the Ravager. I guess they could, but you'll have a Mox at that point. Yeah, um, no, it's yeah. As I said, I so had a, I had really good question that I'm not positive of. It still continues to have the activated ability of that permanent. Uh, if the permanent goes away, right? No, or no, it does not. It does not. Okay. And again, I ran that up to I ran that up the Twitter rules totem to the bosses. Got it. Okay. So so yeah, it still is a. Uh, it could be a second copy of Time Vault, but if they get artifact removal, you're shut down for that at, right. at that point. Okay. Yeah. Not as interesting as I thought, but still, I think it's still I think it's still a playable card because it's so versatile. They can go oh, offense and go defense. As I said, I, it was really good in my blue humans list, and mm -hmm. I I've got it considered in other lists as well. So. And I, I run it in a couple of my CEDH lists, so. Nice. All right, what's your number two? Uh, my number two is an offer you can't refuse. Nice. That's my number two as well. So I'm glad right. we're in the same zone there. Um, so I think this one is, um, I, it's not as good as Swan Song because giving people two mana in, in VRD is pretty painful. Uh, right. But still a one mana counterspell and depending on the deck. Uh, you know, particularly nice if you have a Karn or a Null Rod type effect or a, um, you know, an oof. But, you know, it's still a very, very strong counter spell that's got more applicability than Swan Song. Um, you know, it's just, depending the deck, could be a little scary to give them that too. But it's still a powerful on a player and you have to keep it in mind. Absolutely. Right. And this, the fact that it's a hard counter, so this, it's a, you're playing in a gate. Uh, very late game, you can just be holding up a single blue mana and shut down their plan. And at that point in the late game, it's not particularly good to give them. It doesn't matter whether you give them the, the treasures. Um, I, I think this is just like an all around all star. Uh, the the only scenario where it's not particularly good is exactly what you described, where early game they try to go off. You have to counter a value play of theirs, and then give them extra mana. Um, I think that that's like such an edge case though, because most of the time you're going to be casting this is going to be shutting down something that's truly problematic, like a planeswalker or a big, a big, a big thing they had to slap in multiple resources for anyway, as opposed to, or, or it'll be late enough in the game that the treasures are mostly irrelevant. I think that the, the scenarios where like it's turn two and you're trying to counter a mana rock or something are the times where this does not shine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, yeah. like this is, you, this you don't want to be doing tempo. You don't want to be doing tempo plays with this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Right. The, the, the one avenue you didn't talk about that, we see in modern and modern storm. I don't think it'll be particularly relevant in VRD, but it could be. Is the I cast a spell and counter my own spell so that next turn I can go off with more mana? Uh, right. it, it will almost never happen, probably. But I can imagine a scenario where yeah. um, we end up we end up falling into that. Yeah, I'll uh, you're, you're browsing by the way. It's it's uh it's changing the card there. Thank you. Um, Fixed. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think I think this card like because of. Just it's good in basically like all the quadrants other than that tempo early play. Uh, mm -hmm. has, is like it's going to see play. I don't know. This is probably like a, a 20, 30th round counter spell. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it'll be ahead of something like a mana leak. Um, but it is, I think, going to be ahead of something like Arcane Denial. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, you know, again, it's going to depend on the deck. Like if you're in one of those kind of aggro tempo decks, it, it's probably got a little extra thing where you're just going to. You're shutting down their removal so you can kill them next turn, you know. Right. Yep. Um, so my number three is, or actually, no, sorry, you, you went to your number three since I already did my number two as well. Okay. Uh, so we both had, no, you go ahead and do yours. That's fine. Okay. My, my number three is, uh, this is a spicy one, I think. Okay. Vivian on the hunt. So this is the six man of Vivian that has mm -hmm. birthing pod as a plus two. Yeah. She's um, potent. Yeah. So, so the, the reason is, obviously, six man is way too much to play for a, a planeswalker in general. Um, but I think that the fact that she combos so easily, so the, the exact combo line that I think you're going to see with her is going to be, you get Vivian into play either with casting her for six mana, um, probably off some mana elves or something like that, uh, mm. or you have a Rena Rector to go find her. Like that's, a, right. seems like a pretty reasonable possibility. Plain uh, but, is the other one. Ooh, okay. Yeah, fair. Um, and, and then so yeah, once you have Vivian in play, all you need is a three mana creature and you have an immediate game win without having to play any bad cards. So the, the line is you take the three mana creature, birthing pod uh, it into uh, Felidar Guardian. Yeah. Felidar Guardian blinks Vivian. Vivian then pluses to sack the Guardian to go get Karmic Guide. Karmic Guide brings back Guardian, blinking her. And then you go find Kiki Jiki, 
make a copy of Guardian copying Kiki Jiki, and now all of a sudden you have the infinite Guardians to win the game. So like you're already you're running a bunch of like cards that are already good in this deck. You get to run a regular Birthing Pod shell uh, with Vivian as an extra copy of it, and I think it's just being able to being able to play a card and effectively win on the spot uh, is is a pretty good a pretty good line. So right. six mana is a lot, but I think that even if you're casting it on turn four, it's probably still going to be early enough that it'll be hard to interact with. Yeah, she wasn't on mine, but she uh, definitely was only close to mine, and, and uh, you know is a very good card. So this is a card that I think very possibly m- won't ever see play, but I think someone might have the courage to do it. Like it's just this is a card that I think requires you to to try something like what Darian did in the Saint Louis Presents draft, where he actually drafted a birthday pot uh, right. list. I think that that's that's the kind of thing that like. This could see play in a deck like that. Absolutely. All right. And my next one then is Tainted Indulgence. Ooh, I don't have this one on my list. Ooh, really? So this one has been drafted uh, once or twice already, I think. Uh, Maybe once. Uh, So it's a blue-black instant. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless there are five or more mana values among cards in your graveyard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I, I have played this card. I... I, 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 are you thinking just in a reanimator shell that drop you discard one is good? Yeah, I mean, just absolutely. I mean, or just straight value. You know, like it, the the Merc tight list often always have you know a full a full yard by that part. Uh, so reanimator shell, um, you know, any number of things. Just straight instant speed draw two is always uh, always solid. And but definitely in a shell that wants wants some stuff in the yard, filling for a. Uh, you know, if you're trying to fill your yard out so you can do some big delves, you know. That makes sense. There's a there's that one card that's one in a blue, uh, draw two, discard one unless you attack the creature. I think it's a sorcery though. Is that the reason uh, why this is better? Because it, it's right. an instant. Chart the course. I ran that in blue yes. white humans. It was phenomenal. Uh right. and, and and should it should get some respect, you know. Um but yeah, that, and, and I, but I think those those have effects. Chart the course. There's another one, um, another one of those kind of similar. Oh, uh, like curious obsession is another one that I think the kind of aggro list should look at the enchantment that lets you draw every time you hit. Um, yeah, that that one's a little harder because you have to you have to kind of get your things going. It's like an right. aura, and auras are expensive. Just right. in that, you can get blown out. Yeah. Um, yeah, we already hear people in the chat uh, getting excited about Vivian. Two Chems is, is talking about it. I think it, I think it has potential. I don't know. It requires it requires kind of going all in on that strategy. But um, yeah, Tainted Indulgence, I think very possibly could see play. The fact that it's two colors makes me nervous. The fact that it uh, is kind of a like it's a very slightly upgraded version of Charter Course mm-hmm. um, makes me nervous. But, but I, I can see where you're coming from. It's certainly like it certainly will and has seen play. I just I don't know. I, I question whether this is better than a lot of the other cards that are blue and black and tutor for specific cards, things like that, right? Like L- Lim Duel's Vault feels like it's obviously an incredibly different card, right? But it feels like if you're going to be going in on an instant that costs blue and a black, I'd rather be in that world than this one. Uh, so my, my number four is incredibly out of my wheelhouse, but I think could have a chance, which okay. is Professional Facebreaker. Uh, yeah, she was on my bonus list, so it okay. is... Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a really cool card. I very much question whether it's possible, but given that Ragavan has become a first or second round pick, it, I think it's possible that this right. might actually be able to do things. It's possible, and here's why: because it affects off other creatures that hit. Yep. So you go 100%. turn one robber or turn two robber hitting, and then you drop this next turn, and your robber hits again. You're getting the treasure on top of it, right? And then late game, it lets you turn those treasures into card advantage. So that's, um, there actually is some, uh, there are some, I've read a couple of vintage articles where they were talking about uh, this card in, in vintage for the same reason, you know. Yeah, yeah. I can easily imagine you kind of do a line where you get Ragavan on turn one or two, uh, and then you cast this on turn two or three, yeah. and you're just, you're already triggering to get the treasures. And then once you start running low on gas in this mono red deck, which is what always happens in that mono red deck, right. you then can cash in these treasures because no one's playing lightning bolts. Yeah. So yeah, no, the, uh, the men- menace also bonus. means that the, the menace also means that it, this in the late game, this card effectively becomes, because nobody ever has more than one creature anyway. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's going to become attack deal two damage, draw a card, which is pretty good. The menace is super relevant and it's a human, which, you know, and, and oh, does, 
doesn't uh, doesn't hurt in, in a variety of different aggro ace strategies. Um, I have and actually. For the memes, I mean, Howards can't block them, so that'll be nice the, too. <laughs> these are um, pretty still pretty cheap right now for the full, for the extended foils, and I run it in several commander decks, and so I've been picking them up because I think they're they're going to go up in the long run. So there's my uh, you know the little bit of financial tip is these are still pretty relevantly cheap. Uh, you know, being a like three bucks each for the extended foils, I think at this point. But it, it's in a lot of uh, CEDH lists, and uh, you know, and it has some talk for other places as well. So, cool. Well, yeah, I, I hope I hope this happens, and I think, I think Mono Red is better than than it has seen results for. So, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I don't I don't like Mono Red even, but just like the red, like the red white, the red different aggro. I think the aggro sure. lists are are there. Um, and number four is slip out the back. Nice. Okay, this is my number five. So I'll okay. I'll sub a different number five in for it. Right. But yeah, yeah, I love yeah. this card. All right. So this is just a nice little it's got two different things. One, it can just get rid of a threat for a turn that if it's gonna kill you or something, right? It's gonna make it better. Yeah. But it but it also can save your own creature and make it bigger. Uh it's very, very versatile. It's it's very it fits into your um your draft format, or your not your draft format, it fits into your, your deck pretty easily. Uh, really solid all around if you're in a creature deck. Yeah, I, th I think this card, for me, you need to be in a creature deck of some yeah. kind, whether a creature deck or a creature combo deck, and it will be an all-star when your opponent is on a creature combo deck. So if you see a few Kiki combos or uh, Devoted Druid, like if you start seeing other people drafting creature-based combos, mm -hmm. this is a card that I think you play main deck. In general, I think you play it in the sideboard. Uh, right. But yeah, the, I think I think you kind of need to have both of those things happening. You need to have a meta. You need to either have a meta that is heavily focused on creature combos, uh, or you need to be playing a creature deck yourself that wants this effect, which I think right. will be pretty rare, right? It's like unless you're playing Infect, I, I don't know what kind of deck wants this kind of effect. I mean, uh, it's, in, in, really it's purely good. if it's, it's only for yourself. It's really really good at like protecting your. Um... Esper Sentinel, and then making your Esper Sentinel draw more, <laughs> draw better, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, it's just really good at protecting against removal. I mean, that's the right, and that's kind of the like a com. Uh, I don't think a straight up combat trick is good enough, but I, this is on my list as well because obviously, like, it's way more than a combo combat trick, right? It, it's right. a combo stopper, and that's right. that's a really powerful effect on its own. Absolutely. Uh, Rob asks, how do you think it stacks up against goblins and Layla's th rare thread three drops? Talking about uh, professional face breaker. I think it's worse than Lelia for sure. I think it's probably better than than the uh, than the goblins, like the um, whatever. The, the, there's the two goblins, both of which do roughly the same thing. Uh, and I think, it's, I think it's worse than those. I think it's better than those, but worse than Lelia. But I, uh, I don't know. I also think it depends on how, how heavily you're focused on other creatures, because right. those two goblins, I think, are very much like you just play them and they're your only, only strategy. You don't need anything else. This, I think, requires a more creature-based strategy around it. Right. I mean, I think the 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 card advantage is pretty is pretty huge, right? Uh, and the fact you can, I mean, so there's I've run Layla, right? There's some times where you hit and it's just it's wasted immediately. Um, yeah. This you can hold the treasure to your next turn and use it. So. Um, I, I think it depends. The haste is really big on her, and she gets bigger. Uh, I mean, she she is a must kill threat. So I agree. I agree with your sentiment. I like it, but I also like the goblins better. Like you said, not in a creature creature heavy deck, but in a more controly deck where you just use it as like a giant bitter blossom. You know, you you just kind of protect the threat. Right. And it's let, a win con in a box, right? It's like playing mentor. Yeah. It's it's yeah. not a it's not a card that you play in an aggressive deck. Cool. Absolutely. Um, so number five, uh, since you stole my slip out the back, I will uh -huh. instead put Witness Protection on there, which was on my first honorable mention. Okay. I think Witness Protection has a good chance of seeing play. I don't think it's like going to blow people away, uh, yeah. but I do think that it has... Sometimes you're in mono blue and you want to have a rapid hybridization that is that can handle things that are indestructible, for instance. Right. Uh, like Being able to shut down somebody's Tinker into Blightsteel Colossus when you're playing Merfolk seems pretty helpful. Yeah. Uh, and this 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 does that. If if somebody if you're ever in multiple colors, I don't think this ever gets played. But whenever if, whenever you have somebody uh, going all in on one color, uh, I think this has potential. It was on my consider list, so for sure. Yeah. All right. Then my number five. Uh, we've had some overlap. My lap is my first honorable mention. Uh, Cody drafted this on one of the online ones, but I think it's got a home, um, even though it's a five drop, and that's Urbrask. Herb, Herb, oh, the new one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I looked at this and I had too many words, so I couldn't understand what it meant. 
the thing about this card is that so one it's a four four for haste right I mean, which is pretty nice um it gives you card advantage but what it's really good against is shutting down control decks because they don't get to draw the first card they get to exile it but you exile your counter spell if they don't cast it that turn it doesn't go to their hand right. so this card is phenomenal if you are in a heavy heavy control or combo draft you know that this card's phenomenal because like it puts the piece in exile and if they don't use it that turn it's lost so if it was a counter spell then it's just toast and they don't get to build up a hand, which of course is unless they have drawing extra cards, um, which is going to be, is going to be painful for them. Okay. So just to make sure I understand this, this is effectively a one-sided Uba mask, but it's only for their naturally drawn card. Yeah. So okay. you get to exile that's the, uh, you get to exile a card that you can play that turn and still right. draw your card. They have to exile the card. They have to Uba mask instead of drawing a card, they exile a card. So it's a one-sided Uba mask that they can play this turn, and you get to just get an extra card a turn. Yeah, but it's only their natural drawn card. Like a five mana four four haste is not particularly exciting on its own. Being able to uh, this card feels actually, if I think about it, like an aggressive version of uh, that one siege, not Citadel siege, but the red outpost siege. Mm -hmm. It feels like that in that it kind of just is a red, big cost, expensive thing that lets you draw an extra card every turn. And that yeah. might be good enough. I'm having a hard time visualizing where this falls in the actual decks. It's like, is this a card that's like a topper on a on a, a red aggressive deck that's even above the Hellrider or something? Like it it I don't this doesn't fall into any shell that I can see particularly easily, but it, certainly Cody it has a lot of powerful effects. Cody had it in red black. I considered it in my red white list. And okay. you know, I, I didn't end up pulling the trigger on it. Um, but again, just the, you know, kind of a step above questing beast and mana, um, you know, the five slot there. Um, so, but I, I definitely think it is, uh, you know, again, I'm very high on haste in VRD. So, yeah. uh, I, you know, I think it's a really playable card. Yeah. I mean, this, this certainly is a, is a way to attack Jace and kill Jace on the turn that it's out there. Right. It's, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I think it has potential. Uh, it feels pretty mid, and, and I think there's a lot of competition in the five drop haste, even four power creatures, uh, that I'm not sure this is the one that I would want, but I, I can definitely see a world where it gets played. It has kind of the new set shininess to it that means that I think it will see play in the next three months and probably not after that if it does see play. Okay, makes sense. Uh, cool. Are we, do you want to move into Baldur's Gate? Any, um, anything else that jumped out at you? I have you three. I have three new Capenna Commander cards. Okay. I did not look even look at them. So right. that's not true. I scanned through them and I was just like, these had a lot of reprints. I don't know. I didn't see anything right. that jumped out at me. I've got three new Capenna Commander cards. Uh, Let's the hear first, it. first of which is Lethal Scheme. Okay. So this is one of those I said that I think is super interesting. You know, you've got to be a creature heavy deck because you want the connive to work, right? I said, or the, okay. or the convoke. Because when you convoke this, for every creature that you use to convoke it, they connive. Sure. Right. So essentially, it can be like free, a free. I mean, if you have enough creatures, you have a bitter blossom, whatever. Um, it's a free, free removal. P potentially. Uh, no, it costs still costs two. It'll always cost two, right? Oh, no, one man of the color. Can I, oh, this is uh, convoke, not yeah. uh, the other one. Yeah. Yeah, it's convoke. Yeah. And then, but in addition, so say you had, you know, the four and you cast it, you did it, you get a draw four, discard four. And make potentially make your creatures bigger. So, are you happy with this? Because I think the the most common scenario for this is that you play a like mesmeric fiend or brain maggot or something, and then you cast this for three and connive onto that one creature. Like, is that is that a good scenario for you? Because I think that's the average case scenario. I mean, I think the best you, the scenario you want is two creatures. Sure. Yeah. Right, and like Bitter Blossom is an easy way to make it to be four creatures, right? Right, but right. I, I but think I, I, am, I, am super be... I am super happy with this at two creatures. Convoke. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. I think I think if you can get two, you're very happy. Yeah. I just, yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, yeah, was like, a I world mean, in which they are playing a Planeswalker or creature-heavy enough deck to make this good, and I am also playing a creature-heavy enough deck to it, make it good, it's hard. I, I don't know if you've been following how much you've been following the discords right now, right? But like creature heavy decks are where it's at right now. Like at least in the discord meta, like, you know, combo still there, but like, you know, creature decks are, it's, it's a much more creature format, which is why planeswalkers are kind of in a rough spot. You know, that cycle went through is that the creatures that can answer the walkers are kind of all over the place. So, mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, uh, this is the type of card that I, I know Brandon will always keeps an eye on, right? Because Brandon's always looking for ways to get cheaper and freer spells. And this one, just because of the connive in addition, gives you so much of that extra little upside. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm not saying it's great. I'm just saying don't sleep on it. Oh yeah, no, I, I would not be surprised at all if this sees play. It's it's yeah. not one that I think I, I'm going to wait for somebody else to prove me wrong, but it right. definitely somebody will. I think. All right, new Penta Commander card number two, Grand oh, Crescendo. Uh, Ke Kevin points out in chat that that card can get you out of a car in Lattice Lock, which is amazing to think about. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's very edge case, but I, I cannot wait to see it happen. Yeah. Ooh, uh, Grand Crescendo. Okay. Grand Crescendo. So at a minimum, this card is two white creatures you control getting indestructible until end of turn. You're yep. only drafting this card in the creature deck where you have, where other people have taken sweepers that aren't Toxic Deluge, right? Um... But the fact that at a minimum, that's a playable card in a kind of in and of itself, just give my creatures indestructible for two. But I also get this X ability at instant speed, um, you know, makes this, uh, again, a very specific type of card, but something that I would look for in the right decks. I can totally see that. I, I'm not I'm not a believer on this card, but seeing as we saw, uh, I don't remember who it was. Somebody drafted... Uh, the card that back from the brink or something that like returns two creatures that died this turn for two mana and that card saw play. I, I, I'll believe that this card is better than that for sure. And like there's, there certainly is the um, treat the angels effect where end of turn, I just tap out and then, or not, it was a ret return from the ranks that deck where you just like, right. Something that sands, something in sands where they just like make a bunch of one, one warriors. This was a card deck in standard. That was very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't, but yeah, the, the the idea of I'm going to uh, I'm just going to tap out at the end of your turn and have an army that can take down a walker or just start putting pressure and beating down for four every turn is Absolutely. really good, especially in a control mirror. Yeah, and then the last yeah. one I have for um, our commander cards is has seen been drafted once already, uh, mm -hmm. and that is currency converter. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this card is a wild one. I I am not a believer, but I I heard someone tell me why this card was good, and yeah. I want to hear you tell me again. Um, so it one I'm just gonna let you draw discard cards, right? But if anytime you're building a deck that's already gonna be discarding cards, you get an additional inherent advantage from that card, right? For that one drop, you uh. So I pitch my land to something, uh, to my box diamond. It, it goes to the discard pile, then I exile it. Then I can tap this and put that land back into my graveyard and go get a treasure token, right? I pitch my creature. I go and, um, you know, I do it and just put it back in there and get a 2-2 two -two rogue. So on top of being a looter effect for you, it is gives you constant advantage off of uh, the loot, right? I guess, yeah, this this requires you to have, I don't even know, I don't, what, what density of things that say discard a card on them do you need to have to make this card be playable? Because I 100% I, I believe that any deck built around it and a deck that plays a lot of discard, it can be very right. powerful. We saw that he actually had, in that discard draft. He had uh, it in the Madness draft, Madness deck, right? Um, exactly. I don't know. I, I yeah, don't know the I, answer to that question. Do you but, need like four? Because because it has it has a built in way on on it itself that right. it's not horrible, but you don't want to be paying two mana and tapping it to draw and discard. So like right. you need other things, and I don't know how many you need. Four probably feels like the number I would even have before thinking about it. I mean, wheel gets pretty interesting, right? <laughs> I mean, oh god, yeah, that's very I mean, you true. can only you can only put one card in at a time. You know, so right. if they blow it up, you're but you know you're you're losing the stuff, but. Um, yeah, I mean, so I know it's been drafted once, but I, I definitely think this is that powerful. Um, potent, if, if you have an engine that needs discard, you should be looking at this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. when you said wheels, all of a sudden I'm on board with this card. I, I, like, yeah. you have Hull Breacher, Narset, and this as kind of just, like, ways to punish people. And this yeah. is obviously worse than the other two, but, like, that is that is a shell that this can slot into and be pretty good, I think. Right. Okay, yeah, this is the one that I feel the most confident in after hearing it after hearing about it outside of the context of a dedicated discard deck. Right. Cool. All right, and th those are my new capinas.
Yeah, I, I had a, I had a couple others that I'll just like mention. Extract the truth. I think uh, being able to be a two mana discard spell that makes them also be have an edict for enchantments. I think is is possibly good. Yeah. I think that like the fact that enchantments don't see enough play to justify an edict for them means that I don't have them on my list. But I can imagine a world where enchantments get good enough that it might be a reason. Um, yeah. Jetmir is the like token guy. I think he's like very bad, but Brandon might try oh, him because Brandon, Brandon wants to lean into creatures. Brandon yeah. tried him already. Uh, Jetmir's okay. scary. Jetmir's on my scary list, right? Like, I'm probably not the person for that deck, but I've seen enough Jetmir and Commander at this point that that card sure. is stupid scary. Um, it could just win out of nowhere, you know, quite often. Yeah, so, and then the last one I'll mention, just because Alec uh, will probably play it at some point, is Luxor Giana's right. Gift, which is the de Devoted Druid combo piece that's right. very bad. It's a three-man. Oh, no, another another card that breaks Devoted Druid. Who would have fucked yeah. it? <laughs> right. Like, as soon as they print a second copy of Devoted Druid, I will be the first person to draft this deck. But until then, yeah. it's really hard and really reliant on that one card. So, all right. I right. want to jump into Baldur's yeah. Gate. Jump into Baldur's Gate. Um, so, again, I'm going to say... Everyone hates on Baldur's Gate. I love Baldur's Gate. I think this set is phenomenal. It's got so many of my favorite new commander cards in it. Um, it, it. I think that this set will come back in a year or two, and a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I, I slept on that quite a bit. So um, I know you had some struggles finding play what you thought were playable cards in here. Um, yeah, I, I, have, I have three categories for this one. I have cards that might see play, then I have cards that almost assuredly won't see play, and then cards that probably won't see play. So okay. those are those are like my three categories, and I have I have like I don't know what three to five in each of those categories that okay. I was able to pull out. So I got I got nine to eleven cards here, but so none I, of them I'm excited about. I've drafted Archivist of Augma twice out of this, but it didn't make my list. Right, like Archivist is a fine sideboard card, but it suffers from the how many tutors are there? Uh, other than the fetches, how many people are playing massive tutoring? You're um, sniping my list already. See, that's that's okay. on my list. Well, we'll start with no. that. Start, start with yeah. your card. Right. Uh, so yeah, and this this is like it has the same problem as opposition agent. I don't think it's particularly great. Um, but there's enough white weenie players that somebody at some point will be like, oh yeah, I remember this card and draft it and stick it in their deck. I don't think it'll probably be the correct choice, but it is powerful enough in other formats that people will want to draft it because they will remember it. It will have like, a long memory for people, and especially for people new to the format. But I just think in VRD, there aren't enough tutors to justify it most decks when you look around are going to have somewhere between one and two tutors and this is going to be a two mana two two flash creature 90 percent of the time and you should play containment priest instead yeah i cited i had well i had containment priest main deck uh i cited sure. it in when i was citing a card out but i didn't have anything else really worth citing it in for most of the time and, and it did me okay a couple times but it wasn't spectacular which is why it didn't end up making my list um, yeah. you know, drawing a card is not the same upside as opposition agent. Opposition agent will always be a little sexier because it can stone rain them, you know. Yeah, I mean, and, and even the opposition agent has been falling really hard right. and not very good. Again, so. I, I've come to the conclusion on opposition agent, and I'll say it again, that it belongs in blue-black control lists that has a lot of counter spells because you want to be holding your mana up. And yeah. and then it's and there it's great, right? Um yep. so what's what's your number one? What's the card that you that actually got you excited about this? Like, do you want my real number one? Like, if I was ranking them, yeah. Or sure. do you want like just the first card on my list? Uh, I, I want the, the on your one to five list. What's your number one? Abdel Adrian Gorian's Ward. Okay, I have this no, nice sorry, I like, second I like, no, no, hold on, I like okay. Displacer Kitten. All right, Displacer Kitten is, is also my number one. Do you want to uh, know the fun? So, do, you, do you want to see what just happened in an online VRD? I was planning to draft the one that we're doing just started. I was planning to draft the Displacer Kitten deck, right? I take to fair Mox, I take to Fairy. I'm um, getting set for it. It's going what I assume is well for me. Um, and then I lose Spellseeker to the uh, to somebody. I also lose Balance that round, which was important. And then I noticed the person that took Spellseeker took Recruiter the Guard, and I just realized they're also drafting the Displacer Kitten deck. So I That's just hilarious. took Displacer. I just took Displacer Kitten in the ninth pick, and he said. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, I, did not I have this card really, My parenthetical for this is someone will try it. I I am not a believer. I know you are. I know you love this card, but okay. I'm just, it's my number one because I know, I know somebody will play it, whether it's correct or not. Do you, do you want to hear a line with this? Again, I'll just give you a line. This is why, sure. this is the believer line. Okay. You recruit the guard for Displacer Kitten, 
play any spell. Play the Displacer Kitten, play any spell, Link Recruiter to the Guard, get Trinket Mage. Trinket Mage can now get every mana rock in your deck that's mana positive, because you play it, you blink Trinket Mage, you go get another mana rock, you play it, you just get all of the mana rocks out of your deck with Trinket Mage. Right? Um, I mean, or Spell Secret Lines. Here's the line that's actually in my command deck. This is the line that should make you a believer in this card, right? You go... Blink your play a card, blink your spell seeker. Um, you go get entomb. You play the entomb, blink your spell seeker again. Spell seeker go get, goes and gets reanimate. Um, the entomb puts Thassa's Oracle into the graveyard. You play the reanimate targeting Thassa's Oracle, blinking the spell seeker again before the reanimate resolves. You now go get Pretty demonic powerful. consultation, and yeah. then you play consultation, reanimate resolves. Right? If you've got spell seeker and displacer, you've get you've got and one spell you've got a clear line to a victory, right? Like there's so many lines with this card with demonic yeah. tutor and with demonic tutor and dark ritual and an eternal witness. You can play your, you can tutor your whole deck. I a hundred percent believe that this will happen. I just right. question whether those three to five other slots in your deck would be better done with things that are not like, Four mana two twos, right? That need to have extra things to make them better. It's just it's those so are much all hit. good, highly playable cards, right? Like none of those are four mana two twos. Like the you're talking about Ewit, you're talking about Spell Seeker, right? Like those are all great cards in their own right that already see play. It uh, it can target itself, yeah. So itself. you can like yeah. yeah, you can protect itself. Yeah, I mean that's that's fair. Maybe it is, maybe it is good enough. Maybe the like creatures are seeing enough play that this is already good enough. Uh, it, I, it's seeing some play. I, I in it's seeing play in legacy with Teferi, right? Because yeah. Teferi with just Teferi Soul Ring and it, you go infinite. You draw your deck, um, and make mana up to however many cards you drew. Um, and that there's a, even some of the big, big vintage writers are talking about it as well, and they're they're brewing with it there. Like, um, so definitely don't you know? Like, here's. Monastery Mentor, Spell Seeker, Three Displacer Kitten, and then your basic vintage package of craziness, right? Like, right. This is this is for sure a card that like I know brewers are going to love, and I know it's going to see play, which is why it's my number one. I just, right. I, I really don't like cards that need extra cards to make them work, and this is absolutely that, right? It's it's a it's a big cost to it. It's a four mana creature. Uh, that's four mana is a lot in this format, so. We'll see. I, All right. I, I I hope that this card is great and that it becomes a mainstay and there are decks built around it. I think that it will probably be thrown into decks by people that want to play Displacer Kitten. Right. All right. Um. So my number two is uh -huh. uh, Cloakwood Swarm Keeper. Swarm Keeper. Whoa! Let's pull that one out. That one's out of my list. Yeah, and, and it's very possible that it shouldn't be on mine as well. But this is given the idea that tribal is very good in this okay. format, and that elves in particular is a tribe that uh, oh, we yeah. have seen oh. have play. And this I think good. that once once you're already in the elves deck, this slots into that format really well, and you just have a shell going that uh, this is able to spin up really fast. Right, it goes vertical while you're going wide, and I think that that has like a good potential of being a just powerful card on its powerful card. Once you're already doing the things the deck wants to do. Yeah, no, this card's good. Yep. I don't know how many like token producers there are, but there are there are at least like three or four already in that deck. And I think once you have this, you might you might find extra ones, but I haven't looked right. too hard. I well, just like, know that, like Elvish, I would Elvish want Elvish War Master. Yeah. Right. That's a, I yep. mean, there, yeah. This card's good. There's that one tribal one that just pumps out three tokens. Like th there's so many things that just drop out tokens right. randomly. So yeah, I think this card's going to see play. I don't think it'll be an all-star on the deck, but I think it will just slot into an existing format. Good. All right. All right. So my number two, then, is Abdel Adrian Gorian's Ward. Nice. This is on my second category. I didn't make my list, but I, I like it a lot. And this is a better World Gorger Dragon. I said it is a second worst dragon combo piece. So we, we no. disagree, but I understand why you're saying that. Why is it, why is it worse than World Gorger? It doesn't make infinite mana unless you have a rock. Uh, right. It's but, an it makes in, but it makes infinite one ones. Yes. And it, you don't have to have another target for it because it's a May. Correct. Yeah. That, that I think is a super fringe case, but it has mattered in this format in the past. I'm not going to say it doesn't matter. It, it has mattered. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to have another target for it and it makes infinite one ones. Right. So yeah. at a minimum, it's already making a, a kill. Uh, it makes it kill a turn after. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that it's 
I, they are they are both important cards. I, I don't I I think we are talking about like at fifty five forty five either way. But mm-hmm. yeah, they're they're certainly like they are both dragon combo pieces, right? Uh, I've got a list uh, that's actually black white vampires, but it Ooh. they have a lot of discard stuff, and it's got a Abdel Adrian package in it because it's already discarding stuff to the vampires. So it's got a slight reanimator shell because it also gets to reanimate like Zan- uh, like Lord Xander. So it's got a small reanimate package and a black white aggro vampire list. That's uh, I've it's it's goldfish pretty well at least. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, I think there's just like dragon is a good enough deck by by itself that I I think that this is like I don't know if it, it pushes it over the top by any means, but it it certainly is going to see play yeah. if dragon ever sees play again, which I hope it does. Right. Um, do you ever see this card actually casting this card, or is it purely a reanimator target? I mean, if you've got to cast it, you've got to cast it. Sure. I mean, it's a four four body. I mean, and it can still exile stuff. I mean, if I'm at if I'm at the point where I'm at four man at five mana, and I'll go exile a couple dudes and make some one ones with it and get them back if they die. Absolutely. Yeah. Crambler says, "Would you run this the free win in a reanimator deck that would dra- that would normally draft animate dead? I think yeah. so. I think you'd want to have both animate dead and necromancy." Um, yeah. And if you're going dedicated, you're in Dance of the Dead as well. But like, right. I think if you're already running those two cards, uh, then probably I think with just Animate Deck Dead in my deck, I probably would not run it unless I had like two tutors. If I had like Vamp and Demonic, then I would. But yeah, I don't know. I, this, it, I think it's too inconsistent without uh, with, with just a single target that can make it go infinite to be able to run it over something like I don't know Gristle Brand. Well, not to be able to run it over something like Iona or one of like the top tier Reanimator targets. Right. Cool. Uh, my number three, and this one, I don't, I don't know. I, I hope that this is a card that we'll see play. Sturge. Uh, and I don't think it's like going to blow anyone away, but I do think that ninjas are a good enough archetype that should be seen play, even if they're not. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think this card will slot really nicely into, into the ninjas deck, right? Okay. The fact that it's. It just played early. You can get inferable points of damage. You swap into a uh, Ninja of the Deep Hours or some one of the other ones that are particularly great right now. Um, and then worst case scenario, you cash it in and get a card out of it. It's just like a really low impact card, but um, it wears equipment really well if you need it to. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of places where I think this card can can do some work, right? Like if you're in a Jitte deck that runs things like Bitter Blossom, uh, I could see this this being pretty good in that list. All right. Uh, my next one on the list is Sailor's Bane. Uh, okay, wait. First question from uh, from Eric is, do we think Sturge is better than Changeling Outcast? I think it's better. Uh, just purely based I, on the fact that I think there aren't enough flyers that can block it in general. Uh, I think it depends and, on the deck. What's up? It, it depends on the deck for me. If I have anything that's going to synergize with type, I want Changeling Outcast. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree with that for sure, yeah. But I think Sturge is. I think Sturge. I would rather have uh, than Changeling Outcast in the average deck, just because I can cash it in for a card later if it's bad, right? And and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like there's enough flying blockers at this point. But I think you'd have to look at the field to decide which one's better. And you can take either of them in 46 picks, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. No, I hear it. it's pretty good. Uh, what was your three? Uh, Sailor's Bane. Sailor's Bane. I don't know this card. Um, so it is a 7-7 seven, seven for 9, but the spell costs one less to cast for each card you own in Exile and in your graveyard that it's an instant sorcery or a card that has an adventure. Neat. Okay, so this is the Murktide deck you're thinking? Yeah, so I mean, basically, and it's got Word 4, right? So I I pretty much kind of slept on Murktide, right, in a lot yeah. of ways. Like, I didn't think you could really pull it off in reliably enough in vrd right but i've been proven wrong time and time again but it's punched me in the jaw um so you know delve is legitimate and i know uh that their vintage players have kind of at least mentioned this as a possibility in there uh, as this giant beater that's for um you know with your fill in that yard and then you know whatever reasons so uh, in that this same better than that one stupid artifact turtle that people like to play the popper one like and that card i've seen play i guess right yeah, no, I, I think this card's the truth. This seems very good to me. Like, yeah. I think you will cast this for two mana a lot of the time. Yeah, so you got instant sorceries or cards that have an adventure, right? So that even gives you, that's pretty nice because that gives you like Brazen Borrower and uh, stuff like that as count, count as bodies for it. 
Right. Yeah. You can you can bounce using the petty theft and then and you and you don't have anytime. and you don't have to exile them. Right. So you're so you can do it get get this cheaper and then exile them to something else later. Correct. Yeah. You're saying that you you can cast petty theft and then cast sailor's bane and then later cast the brazen borrower. Yeah. No. What I'm saying is like you can cast uh, sailor's bane and then cast murktide um, and get rid of the stuff oh, that you just made Mer made sailor's bane cheaper with. I see. I see. Yeah, or the other way around, right? You can right. first exile it to dig through time or something, and then make Taylor yeah. Payne cheaper off of the fact they're exiled. Because it checks, it checks as exile too. So yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, the fact that it checks exile too actually makes it ridiculous. Yep, and yeah, a dead brazen borrow counts. A brazen borrow on the field does not count, which is the right. one the one downside. But yeah, no, this this feels incredibly good. Just given the fact that delve spells are already like very good, and and delve has been increasing in, in quality over the time. Like this feels like it slots into that deck very well. I like right. this a lot. I did not see this card before, but yeah, you're totally right. Okay. I, I think this card mapped in with all the other big dumb dragons that cost like a million mana that I just didn't even pay attention to it. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Uh, so I will ignore my Archivist in spot four and instead talk about the next one, which I think goes back to one of our earlier conversations. Dawnbringer Cleric. This is okay. the question of how much versatility do you need on a bad card before it becomes good? Uh, and really this cool. one has a whole lot of abilities. So you can either, you can spend two mana to get a 1-3, which sucks, but you can gain two life if you need to, which sucks, or you can destroy an enchantment, which mostly sucks, this or is a you can exile a card from a graveyard. This, this is, is a reprint, reprint. oh my from, god. From, from AFR, yeah. Okay, in that case, never mind, ignore it. It's also uh, bad. Okay. Uh, I'll stand by my Archivist of Agma, but... Okay. Um, What's next up is one that has been mentioned in some possibilities. I don't know if it's going to work, but I want it to. Raga Draga Gorgut's Boss. No, 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 no. Okay. Yes, yes, De yes. Defend yourself. <laughs> you're, look, you're, you're playing Mana Dorks. You're going to drop yep. this fast. Those mana dorks attack, and when they do damage, they get to untap. It, that's the clause yep. that makes this card playable, right? That whenever you cast a spell, that when whenever a creature you control with mana ability attacks, untap it. So you get to attack with your mana dork and then immediately untap it. Like again, I've seen this deck in Brawl, right? Yep. And it's scary how fast this deck can crank out 20 damage. Because you're dropping mana dork, mana dork, mana dork this swinging for a bunch untapping it and then you have removal up right or you have whatever like this this deck can crank out a lot of damage with you know, not even worrying about that last clause right like that last clause is crazy good but you're not not caring about that um like the issue yeah. is of course the question that you're having is what else are you doing in this deck when you don't have raga draga right that's exactly it right and for all you always are guaranteed to have it in this one, it's right. like, okay, I'm going to be drafting Priest Britannia and all these, like, mana dorks. I'll have Gaia's Cradle. And, I, right. I like, I'll have Genesis Wave, maybe. Like, I, I don't know. Like, maybe you're just a mana deck that, like, you're playing, uh, like, you're playing all the Druids, right? And that set, what is it, Sentai? What's what's the the Centaur Druid guy? Mm -hmm. You probably played that in this deck. Um, I don't know. So There's a lot of choices here. There are things, though, that make this more interesting in the possible way, right? Like, the one that turns all your creatures into forests. Okay. Yeah, ambush commander. Uh, no, like the, well, there's a, a big elemental from last year, from the last commander set. I can never remember its name, but it like all your creatures become forests. Um, and it's a forest. Okay. Um, yeah. Or uh, there's the three mana new one that just came out that makes all of your creatures have tap for green. Right. The, the, she's on my honorable list. She's Shahira. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. the one. It's only tokens. Makes all your tokens tap for green. Oh, okay. That's worse. Right. But that also is interesting in its own way. That's why she's on my honorable sure. list, right? Uh, but Cryptolith writes. Sure. Yeah, Cryptolith writes. That's, that's a better example. So, I mean, again, it's out there. I'm not saying this is going to happen. But, like, this thing is aggressive enough mm -hmm. that if someone finds a shell for it, it's there's nothing in it that's not playable. It's finding the deck for it. I agree. So just to, like, brainstorm this a little bit, I'm imagining a scenario where you kind of spend the first two turns casting Mana Dork into Double Mana Dork, mm -hmm. and then you cast Raga Draga. That scenario seems good enough, right? Like, that's just like, right. you're going to crush them with Gruul Smash and you win the game. In the right. scenario where you aren't casting Raga Draga, what does the rest of the shell look like? Like, how, what do you do when on turn three you have five mana? What, what's your payoff in this, like, mostly green deck? Nissa. Um, sure. Right. And again, so don't forget, like Nissa lands, actually all of those spells, because it, each creature you control the mana ability. So Nissa lands become five fives. 
Right. Yeah. Um, a card that I think has not been drafted yet that should, the one that for the turn makes all your lands into 2-2 indestructible reach tramplers or whatever. Um, yeah. Right? Like, they, they become 4-4s, four right? So, man lands... Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think Raga Draga is, like, a playable card, but it's kind of, like, in the deck where you're playing Raga Draga, what do you do when you don't draw it? Right, but I'm saying, like, Nissa's good enough on her own, right? So, okay. things like Nissa are where you're going to go. Things that are going to turn your lands into creatures, because they still work with Raga Draga but then get aggressive right all right yeah i mean i i, I that deck sounds super cool like yeah. i hope yeah it's kind of a question of like if is your is this deck that plays minimal interaction and plays five mana and six mana green stuff is that good enough i don't know we'll find out know. but I, it'd yeah, be really cool. I said, it's on my list i'm answering your question what am i doing outside of Dragon draga it's nissa right and yeah. cards like that questing no beast, i totally nissa, it. you know yeah, I mean those those cards are good, right? But usually they get played in decks that have other interaction that lets you survive on turn four against the unfair decks, and th that's the thing I'm worried about. I'm playing this kind of strategy. Yeah. Um, my number five is Reckless Barbarian, uh, and oh, I yeah. I have no I have no idea if this is actually going to be good enough, but I really hope it is. Just it was going I, to be on my list, and I forgot to put it on there. So yeah, see, see, both both of us are big fans of the big red deck where you cast Seething Song into giant monsters, mm -hmm. and this feels a little bit like that when you squint, right? It's you're going to cast it on turn one or two, and then yeah, the next turn you're going to go off and just cast like a five mana red creature, then be down with it. Yeah. Um. Or or you use it to get Blood Moon plus a bunch of creatures. I don't know, like. Uh, I hope that there is some kind of deck that does fast red things, and this would fit into that deck nicely. Absolutely. Uh, no, I like it a lot. All right. My number five, then, is... And this is, again, this is a reacher. I do not know what this fits in, and I know you're not going to like it because it's three colors. Oh, yeah, probably not then. But this card, I think, is too powerful for it not to find someone to try it somewhere, right? That's Jan Jansen Chaos Crafter. Jan Janssen. Jan Janssen. Uh, I'm going to wait for Eric to pull this one up because I have no clue what Chaos Crafting is. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I saw this card. Uh, okay. So I, I could see it providing value over a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Which of the abilities are you using most? I mean, in my, my playing with him in like commander you, i use both equally yeah i mean um it really depends on the draw and what you're needing to do at any given point right i mean so i don't think there's a set way i think that's the flexibility of them is that it turns your you know little extra servo tokens into t treasures or it turns extra artifacts that you either come into playability into others so again i do not know what this home looks like I just feel it's powerful enough to keep an eye on. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, if, if there's like intruder alarm, I'm, I'm like trying to like find ways in which this card could, could like go infinite, right? But it, that feels right. like it has to be the thing. I, I feel like as a, like a standalone value engine, both of these are so minor of effects that, and maybe I'm wrong, but they feel like incredibly minor to me. But yeah, there are we'll there see. are some infinites. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head outside of intruder alarm. Obviously, intruder alarm. But uh, yeah. there are some other infinites as well. But uh, you know, yeah. Again, I think it's a, an interesting little guy. But the three mana obviously is is a is a pain on it. Yeah. So, so one that I think people are going to be mad if we don't mention is wild magic surge. Uh, it, it's a red removal spell. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's good particularly good, but pe people are people are talking about it in the CEDH world. So I think it's right. worth mentioning here at least. I I actually think it's better in VRD than CEDH, and the reason is is there's a lot of times people may only have one or two of that permanent types, right? Okay. So like as enchantment removal, like the likelihood that they're going to get another enchantment is really slim, right? Planeswalker removal, depending on the deck, you may they may not get another walker off of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and in some some decks creature removal, they may not get another creature. Um, so Even I, I lands, think, right? Like there's there's enough yeah. lands that are really important that you'll play this as whatever the bad abrupt decay is, and yeah. you'll be happy with it. Yeah. So, but yeah, I definitely yeah. think it has upside there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what deck it slots into, but so, I think it will get played at some point. Yeah. Um. The the other one that is my like, I really hope this happens is Altar of Ball. 
I don't think it's going to happen, but no. uh, the, the idea of I'm going to play a recurring nightmare deck and have this as a second copy of recurring nightmare that's way worse uh, feels like yeah. a thing that could potentially happen, but it's, I don't know, it, it's pretty bad. I don't think you're, ever, you're not recasting the sorcery side of it, but right. the idea of uh, I'm just going to cast a two mana recurring nightmare. The fact has, you have some, to has some potential. The fact you have to exile a creature is the downside of it, right? I mean, totally. if it was sacrifice, you don't get the chance. If it was sacrifice a creature, it'd be playable, but. Of course, yeah, yeah. Then it would be it would be ridiculous. It'd be a recurring number that doesn't go back to your hand. Uh, right. But yeah, cool. No, I think I think that's everything. Like I have a few other things on here, like two headed axes, a second copy of Team or Battle Rage. I have. Uh, well, I have my some commander. Other boring cards, but I have my commander. You know I have my commander. Right. Okay. Let's hear. Him. Let's hear. Him. All right. Number three, Aboleth Spawn. Oh, I saw this card, and I was just like, I don't. I believe this card could see play, but I have no idea what it does or why anyone would want it. Same thing. Powerful effect. No idea yeah. what I would want it in yet, but it is a powerful effect, that, especially because it's a 2-3 flash two, flash with Ward 2, right? I mean, that's a big, that's a nice body. Um, I don't know. I don't know what, but, you know, not going to be surprised if it pops up. I just, yeah, like, I, I sort of rack in my head about, like, which of these triggers do I even need to think about? I also agree with Crambler that the art is horrifying. Uh, it's, it's, horrifying. it's appropriately typed uh, creature type line. Abolus um, are horrifying. But uh, yeah, like, which which triggered abilities do people get from creatures entering that you want? To, it, like, it's so edge casey. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the I want fury and I want solitude and I want sure. grief, right? Uh, those are the ones that first pop into mind, right? Are <laughs> stealing people's solitudes and griefs and furies, right? Stealing their triggers. Yeah. Well, it, does, it, does it steal it? No, it just copies oh, it, it, right? Copies it, right. Right. So so it's, because that's where I, my first thought was like, okay, well, can I use this on Thassa's Oracle? And the answer is, yeah, but you don't want to. Right. Um, but, but yeah, for solitude and, and grief and all of those, this makes some sense. Yeah. Uh, but again, I feel like this falls into the opposition agent problem where like how how many of those effects are there and is it going to be consistent enough? I don't know. I, yeah. I hope I hope it's cool, but I yeah. just am going to I'm going to wait and see and actually look through the list and be like, I want to have two to three copies of things this can interact with. Right. So. Um, and number two, Artificer class. Artificer class. Okay. So, I mean, the third on this is gravy, right? If you get up to the long game and you do the third, that's gravy. But the first two alone are, you know, so for your two mana, you're getting the first artifact spell you cast each turn, costs one less to cast. That has value. Right. Uh, I don't think it's ridiculous, but it has value. Yeah, not ridiculous. But then for another two mana later on, you get to reveal tar cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact and then put it in your hand. Not that's reveal, not, not reveal the top five, not reveal the top three, just reveal to you hit an artifact and put it in your hand. Is there any world where this is a you run one artifact and you find it every time? Like, is is that a thing this could ever be? I don't think that's the primary reason, right? But Maybe. I'm trying to think of like, is there a is there a, a, a artifact combo that makes that happen? Right. Um, and then, as I said, if probably. you get to six, six is gravy. At the beginning of your end step, you get a token that's a copy of target artifact you control. <laughs> I like the aspirational goal by Pop BBC of uh, of giving them a leveler. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the last ability will almost never happen. Maybe I don't know. I think it's very unlikely to happen. But I think the the, the second ability is good enough to make this card. Have yeah, good, but good a lot of the a lot of the artifact decks have pretty fast mana anyway, right? So if you're running, you got Academy, you've got uh, that's true. You know, I mean, uh, six is prop in, in the Academy deck. Six is probably more realistic than you think. That's true. No, no, that's very true. Once once you're kind of deep in the artifact world. Yeah. Uh, which you want? Yeah, no, actually, I'm a believer for this card. This seems yeah. good. All right, and then number, the, the number downside one. to it, importantly, being it's not an artifact, so right. it doesn't it, it it you have to really want it. Right. My number okay. one from the commander decks is green slime. Ooh, I do love the name on Baldur's Gate cards. Like D and D is great, and they they hit it. This card, okay. Yeah, I. I don't think this is good. Really? But yeah. Why? So it only counters things off of artifacts and enchantments. And mm -hmm. I think that is niche enough that, okay, 
Let me back it up. I think that this is a playable card out of the sideboard, but you will not want it in most games. Yeah, it's a sideboard card, 100%. Okay, but it is okay. Yeah, yeah, there we go then. I, I'm on board then, I think. Yeah, it is an amazing sideboard card, though. I think. Sure. Yeah, I mean, there I'm with you. You know, so you you foretell it out for two. You can do it later for green. For green, if you, the problem in VRD is, of course, is if you foretell it out, they know it's coming. Unless you have more than one foretell card, right? Yeah. Unless you draft drafted like a salt coming or something. Um, yeah, and you won't. But they're gonna dr- play their artifact, right? They're it it counters mana abilities too, by the way, right? So it, it is not a it doesn't ignore mana abilities, so it can counter mana abilities. Um, Wait, I don't think that part is true because you won't be able to respond to a mana ability. The, it depends the, on I guess. The, yeah, timing I guess. On, the timing on that doesn't doesn't work, right? right. Hello, ghostly right. Eric Levine again. Um, you don't you <laughs> don't you don't have priority to do that. You're not you don't you don't get to do that. Like well, what it does do is counter a time vault and kill a time vault, and that's it does great. do that. It does you, do that. You can muck up a staff of domination or a time vault or right. whatever. Yeah. Grindstone, right? Like th- this card is very good against the so, artifact. Combo it does deck, which mana. definitely exist. It doesn't affect mana ability. It does affect mana abilities. The rules don't though. <laughs> <laughs> I guess yeah. If if you could find a way to make a mana ability operate at non mana ability speed, then yes. Right. Um, which I, I, my my brain is now going off in a different direction. I'm gonna stop from doing. But yeah, I I cannot imagine a scenario where that happens. But no, like the one once you kind of couch it as this is a sideboard card, I fully agree. I think it's very good because even if you but, do tell it, which maybe you don't because you want to hold it up as a trick in the right. very late game, but in the mid game. I foretell a card, and then my opponent says, okay, I have to find a counter spell that counters a creature right. before I can win. And that's a right. huge ask, right? Like, three quarters of the counter spells as X play counter non-creature things. Yeah. Well, and, and as we've said many times, right, sideboards are really where this, get, you know, the big part. So, like, the best card out of the commander decks being a sideboard card is not a bad thing because, you know, we all need to be thinking more about our sideboards and what we're doing. And this card is a phenomenally versatile sideboard card that, uh, and the fact that it also gets trigger abilities, like activated and triggered, is, uh, you know, a, a pretty potent little uh, little bit there. Totally. And yeah, it, it can counter something like uh, Mana Vault or Mana Crypt because they have upkeep triggers that even though they're not uh, they're not activated yeah. abilities, they are triggered abilities for them. So you can you can still pop them both. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it is kind of a like you'll not be able to stop a soul ring, for instance. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, this this feels actually like at first I read this card and thought this is way too narrow to be playable main deck. I can imagine fields now where you even play it main deck. But I think yeah, it's, it, like you said, far more likely out of a sideboard. Yeah, I mean there, there's a field or two where you're gonna play it main, but most likely not. Um, anything else that jumped out as like, we should chat about this card? Um, no, I mean, I think the, the, all the big dragons have a somewhere like, um, a sneak attack possibility, right? Like, sure. you know, if I'm sneak attacking, you know, I'm gonna, right. If I'm sneak attacking, I'm going to consider those dragons, like, or even brass getting, you know, animating dead for however many are my thing. Um, silver is probably pretty scary because it's a 40 card format. So if you roll a 20, you draw 20 and you, you die the next turn, you know? Um, so, I mean, I think those dragons, if you're sneak attacking, keep in mind, I don't think show and tell, I just think there's better things to show and tell, but if I'm in a sneak attack, I want enough things like, or even, uh, or boar, you know, like sneak attack and boar. So if I'm, uh, ill hard, yeah. um, uh, and yeah, I think sneak attack is underdrafted. I, I like yeah. that. That's strategy yeah. a lot. Yeah, there, there are a couple other cards in there, I think, that, but I definitely think in the long run this set is, uh, I've got an article coming soonish about Faldorn, one of the commanders. Um, we did a whole theory discussion with a bunch of people on the Discord about, and I had a couple people like, hey, make me a list of what you would do. I'm not saying this is good, but I just want to, you know, let's talk about the theory lists to right, yeah. talk about this effect and how this It was a fun discussion. Uh, yeah. I think that's that's something we should do more often. I just like have a channel for like, let's spitball a deck. Yeah. So, uh, but I definitely think that there are a lot of, um, I think a party deck actually could be pretty interesting. I think that some of the tools from the party pre, uh, commander precon, uh, I don't know if it's good, but, uh, you know, it's something that I would consider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think like these are deeper than I thought these decks were going to be. Uh, but okay, so Eric pulled up the Nalia card. So it lets you cast party cards. And yeah. if you have a full cop deck, then, okay, yeah. I mean, it, it pumps all your creatures and gives them death touch. Seems all right. Yeah. 
uh, for the discussions. Uh, Pop, are you are you asking about for the discussions of where we're going to build a deck? Uh, if so, those have been asynchronous. We've just been kind of like having them in chat. Um, if you're talking about these, uh, if you're talking about these conversations, we should probably try to post these more often uh, or ahead of time. But um, right. yeah, cool. All well, right. thanks everyone for tuning in and joining us. This is a, a blast as always, and Absolutely. I appreciate y'all hanging out late with us tonight. And remember, uh, if you are you have not done one, feel free to join the Discord. There are always, and now we have modern rotisserie drafts firing as well. We've had two of those. Mm -hmm. um, and then look forward for three weekends from now. Um, it will be the next big St. Lotus stream um, with myself and uh, a couple other folks on commentary. And we're f finishing up the final drafts and getting all the uh, I's dotted and T's crossed for who's going to be there. And we're looking forward to a, another giant face-to-face -face shindig. Uh, we've got Max Schroeder, a uh, longtime L2 uh, vintage aficionado, loves vintage, has full-powered vintage deck, of full-powered shop deck of his own that he's, he's long played. And uh, looking forward to seeing what he comes up with as, uh, as a big vintage head. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it'll be really cool having somebody coming from that angle into the format. Yeah. Um, we're also having our first crossover back from, uh, from the St. Louis Presents. Heidi and Darian are both going to be coming over to play, and nice. that'll be pretty exciting to, to see them integrate into the main VRD as well. Yeah, Heidi's the one that brought Scheming Fence in the format to, to our eyes, right? I mean, sure. just in a card, and then we, we kept noticing new things to do with it. So, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I look forward to seeing what Street Fighter cards she drafts in our format. <laughs> nice. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody, and uh, thanks, Eric, right. for being behind-the-scenes production. Thanks, everybody.